Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about why you, why you may stay in a relationship when you know it's time to leave, but find yourself consciously sort of knowing like, okay, I should go, this isn't healthy, I'm not happy, and yet you find yourself continuously going back into the same cycle, into the same patterns with the same person, despite knowing on some level that nothing will change. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what's actually going on behind the scenes, first and foremost, as an anxious, preoccupied attachment style when this happens. So number one, the first thing you need to know is that this happens with anxious, preoccupied attachment cells the most, more than any other style. And what's essentially happening all the time is our conscious mind can logically understand something, but our subconscious mind is really the one running the show. And research is very conclusive about this. Like this is very clear. And so this is why you see things like somebody may be in a bad mood and they may consciously realize and be like, oh, I just want to snap myself out of a bad mood, but it doesn't happen. Or somebody says, oh, I just want to snap myself into having good habits all the time. And it doesn't work like that. Like you don't necessarily just pick up and start going to the gym seven days a week when that's something you've never done in the past. So we actually have to program habits in and sort of under that same umbrella or theme, we have to program habits out. And so essentially what happens is your conscious mind may know logically that something's not working and not healthy, but your subconscious mind may still be attached to a person. It may not be done in the situation. And there's a couple of main features for why this happens for anxious preoccupied attachment styles specifically. Feature number one is that the, br the brain is wired to avoid pain, okay? And to seek pleasure, but also to seek relief. And anxious, preoccupied attachment style individuals have huge fears of abandonment, right? So it doesn't have to be that like you abandon the person, like any breakup, breakup in a relationship can feel like some kind of form of abandonment to APs. And they also tend to have fears of being alone. And they also tend to feel afraid and, and sort of feel like unsafe on their own. So if you are, or if you have a friend who's an anxious, preoccupied attachment style, even, and you're like, Hey, why does my friend keep going back to this person? Something that's very useful and important to know is that this, that's essentially a trauma response for an anxious, preoccupied person, because the, the core wounds for the AP that are associated with abandonment, a lack of safety, when there's a lack of connection or being alone are really strong. And so essentially what's taking place is a part of this individual knows, and if this is you, you probably relate to this, like a part of you knows this relationship isn't working. The person's not meeting my needs or respecting me or caring for me the way that I want and need them to. But then a deeper part of you um, is essentially tied to that person. And part of it is driven by fear. Part of it is driven by the fear of having to feel that way again, that abandonment feeling, that lack of safety feeling, that aloneness, that, that sort of sense of loneliness and, and fear around that. And so, you know, what's actually taking place is your brain just prioritizing the fear of feeling those things and trying to keep you safe and comfortable by not having to go through that. And it can be a big part of re a reason for why we stay, even though we know better at a conscious level. Um, and so if this is something that's happening to you first and foremost, like it's really good to just give yourself a moment to empathize about this with yourself, have compassion to yourself or your friend, whoever may be going this, because it's not really as easy for anxious, preoccupied individuals as some may think. It's not really as easy as like, oh, just leave and that's it. Just like it's not easy for anybody to be like, oh, I've been in a bad mood and let me just change my mood immediately. Like it's not always so simple because a lot of these things are happening at a subconscious level. Now that's not it. There's a few other really key components that are often going on here beneath the surface. It's really important to pay attention to. And actually, before I tell you about this, if you want to do a full deep dive into this, like this whole part of what I'm going to share with you and like what we've just been talking about, and you want to gain that self-esteem and self-confidence to properly leave a relationship when you know it's not working, I actually have a whole course that covers this that you can check out for free for seven days. It's called How to Heal from a Breakup. And it, it really encompasses... Um, each attachment style and like what their core fears and wounds are that keep them and how to work through these things as well. And you can use the link below and check it out for free for seven days. Um, so anyways, so, so as we go into sort of this at a high level, what you also have to understand is just like I said earlier, the brain is wired to avoid pain, but then also see, to seek its needs, right. To seek the pleasure um, associated with getting its needs met. Now, if we feel really disempowered and basically in a state of learned helplessness around 
our own needs and being able to meet them ourselves or to have a really good strong support system in our lives where we have other people who meet them for us, then essentially what takes place is we'll go back to being attached to the form that is in our subconscious comfort zone for which we're used to getting our needs met. So let's just say, for example, that you aren't very good at being present with yourself, with your feelings, with your needs, with your own emotions, um, with your boundaries, like you're not really checked in and tuned into yourself. Then if you have a partner who comes along and gives you like two out of 10 of that need being met, it's still 20% more than what you're giving to yourself. And then if you don't have other like stable resources for attention, Sometimes it feels so scary to the mind of an AP to let go of this person because at a subconscious level, we're also letting go of our relationship to this need being met, right? And if we feel starved of that need on our own, then it's kind of like imagining that you're out like in the wilderness and you have this little bit of food left that you can ration and somebody takes it away. Like you're like, no, like even though it feels like a little bit of food, you're like, please, I need that to survive, right? To, to prolong my life. And at, at a same level, emotionally, our subconscious mind's relationship to our needs, whatever form those needs may be in, even emotional needs, we have that same like survival driven mindset around them. So if we have a little bit of something being met and then we think of leaving that person and it being gone completely, it feels very jarring and scary and frightening to the subconscious mind. And also we associate a good feeling if we keep going back to that need as well. So that pleasure pain cycle um, continues to sort of draw you in at a subconscious level, even though your conscious mind may know better and know that this person is not serving you. Now, there can be other needs, right? So you really want to take a look at like what needs this person meeting as a whole, because there can be things beyond just attention. And even if this person is not meeting your needs nearly, you know, in a way that you think is healthy for a romantic partnership where you're investing your time and energy and care into somebody, even if they're meeting your needs like two out of 10 in multiple areas, if you don't have empowered systems yourself or with other friends and family members in those same areas, again, you'll almost feel like this, this addictive type of draw into those needs because that person's like your needs dispenser, like without them, where are you going to get your needs met? And so it's really important to be able to isolate and write out what those needs are and then come up with really healthy strategies to empower yourself in the relationship to yourself and in relationship to others to meet these needs instead. Um, so it can be things like attention, validation, affection, um, care, consideration, fun, novelty, exploration. I mean, there can be so many different needs. We have a whole needs course you can check out for free as well using the link below um, called Discover, Embrace, and Fulfill Your Needs if you're feeling stuck about like what your needs are in a relationship. Um, but it's a really important thing to pay attention to because it will help you once you empower those systems in, in your life um, without that person then your subconscious mind isn't so terrified to let them go if you know that the relationship's not right for you. And last but not least, you can have other beliefs in there. It doesn't just have to be the fear of being alone or abandoned. It can be fears like I'll never find somebody again. Um, you know, I won't find somebody who has these certain qualities or traits again, like this person. Um, I don't know how to be alone. Nobody will ever love me the way this person loved me on a good day. You know, we can have all these sort of beliefs that we've adopted and acquired. And I would really challenge and urge every one of you who may be in this situation or have been in this situation to try to challenge some of those beliefs because we can't know, right? The mind can measure what it loses because it can see it and it's current, but we can't really measure like what we can gain, what's on the horizon, what's on the other side of this growth, this letting go, this shedding of something that's not working for us. So it's a very powerful thing to tap into and to pay attention to. And I hope this makes a whole lot of sense. And again, if you want to check out our needs course or our healing from a breakup or even anxious preoccupied attachment salary programming course um, using the link below, you can check them all out for free for seven days. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.